Hey, it is Tiki Technical Tuesday. Inside of this cooling kiln are the very, very last of the 200 glitter glaze volcanic vapor tiki mugs that we did. I can't believe that we've come to the end. I'm not gonna lie, glazing the volcanic vapor mugs was a lot of work. One of the most complicated glazed applications we've done here in the studio. So complicated, in fact, that I did not even remotely consider doing a super limited version or a special edition version of the mug because I felt that the standard glitter glaze edition was plenty special. That was the plan, at least, until I hit a bit of a snag reviewing some bisqued pieces. So here we have some bisqued pieces out of the kiln. The one on the left is how it should look. You'll notice the back has an opening, which we cut out of the leather hard clay before we put it into the kiln. Now, number 131 had a horrible surprise. Somehow we had gone all the way through cleanup, drying, and a bisque fire without cutting a hole into the back. My first thought was, we got to throw it away. But then I thought about luster. What is luster, you're probably wondering. Well, luster is a unique coating in ceramics. It is not a glaze. It is not a slip. It is not an underglaze. It is a metal. It is a thin coating of metal fused to the ceramic body via a firing through the kiln. Now, it is just metal. So the thing to remember about luster is it will show through exactly the surface that's underneath it, whether it is a satin surface, like this white satin glaze under these gold luster decals, whether it is a porous and rough surface, like this gold luster applied directly to cast porcelain, or whether it's a shiny surface, like this golden tooth, which is put over a highly gloss layer of clear glaze. The other thing to keep in mind about luster is it's usually a precious metal, most often gold. When I say gold, I mean real gold. The Duncan Premium Gold Luster contains 10% 22 karat gold in suspension in a resin lacquer fluid. Now, real gold is really expensive and that's why you will spend $40 for a container of this stuff. And when I say container of this stuff, I mean a small container of the stuff. It's $40 for two grams of luster. My goal for volcanic vapors number 131 was to turn our accident into a happy accident and coat the center blobby section of the mug with gold luster. Now to do that, I would have to remove the score lines that we have scribed into the back of the mug. Now the mug is just bisque fired, which means it's not rock hard, but it's still pretty hard. So to get rid of those score lines and any seam lines that I don't like, I am first going over it with a pumice stone. It's like a hard little, I don't know, rough stick. And then I'm hitting with sandpaper and then I'm going back with the pumice stone. Anyways, it's, it's a long, tedious process. The dust is hazardous and that's why I'm wearing the respirator and I'm in the spray booth to suck all of the harmful dust out and you know away from my lungs. Um, but in the end, we turned out with a, a pretty nice, smooth looking number 131. Okay, so there we go. Uh, after lots and lots and lots of sanding, I have removed the back lines from this piece. I'm super happy with it. There is still a tiny, tiny little puka where I had poked uh, just a little gas escaping hole. We did this while we were um, seaming the mugs just so that uh, before we were able to get to cutting the back out, sometimes the piece would shrink and we get a little cracking. Anyway, I can't get rid of that hole. The hole's always gonna have to be there. Hopefully it will not be that noticeable when we get the luster on. Really happy with it. Next step, clear spray of glaze. Now I know I said clear, but in the end I opted to use a white gloss glaze. Now why am I doing this? One, I want a uniform white color underneath, not sometimes the, the, the raw clay can have some irregularities of color. And I want the gloss because remember, like I said, luster is dependent on the surface underneath it. If you want it to be a super shiny gold, you need to have a super shiny base underneath it, hence gloss white. 
Once we've got three coats of glaze sprayed on, then it's time to wipe the bottom, a critical and often forgotten step so that the glaze doesn't fuse to the bottom of the kiln. And then we put it in for a glaze firing. Nice and shiny. This will look fantastic covered in gold luster. Okay, so I'm examining closely <clears throat> the gloss white spray application I did on here, and it's it's okay. There's there's areas underneath here where there's still rough clay visible, um, and I don't really like that. I'm oh, this is a big decision. My concern is that will show up. You're going to see a high gloss when the gold is applied. This will be all really shiny, but then it's going to go dull here underneath the cheekbones, and I'm not. I'm not too thrilled with that. I think I'm going to risk a second application of white gloss and um, a second glaze firing. Considering that we're actually committing real gold to this thing, and I've already spent hours in that spray booth sanding it down, I think it's worth doing a second glaze firing just to get things perfect. Okay, I've got two coats on there. I'm gonna do a third just in the areas that I knew were really thin, um, and we're gonna put it back in. Now, I don't usually do brush applications of glaze, uh, but this stuff seems to flow pretty well. Now, why am I not putting it on the tops and the bottoms? I really like the way they look. There's not a lot of glaze on the top and the bottom, so it goes to satin and then almost to matte on the top. That's cool, because I'm not gonna be putting luster on the top and the bottom, just in this middle section. So that's what I want to really look shiny and smooth. So I'm putting the glaze on thick in that area. And let's all just cross our fingers. It's time to go back into the kiln for glaze firing number two. Hopefully this one works out better. Uh, yes, I'm using my big kiln to fire one piece. That's because these volcanic vapor mugs are just too tall to fit into our smaller doll kiln. And I am also getting a little bit of anxiety about this point with this additional unplanned firing about getting this whole thing done in time for Tuesday. Fingers are crossed. We're back in the spray booth and I just put another coat of glaze on it. I wasn't happy with the, the brush surface. It just looked terrible. So we're putting it back in the kiln. I'm going to get this thing done in time for Tuesday, I promise. Well, I don't promise. I don't want to make any promises with ceramics, but I just I just wasn't happy with it. It's got to be perfect. Well, not perfect, but close to perfect. Anyway, back into the kiln. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Super smooth, super shiny. I'm glad we did that uh, third firing. How many firings is that? There's a lot of firings. Anyways, it's good. It's ready for luster. But wait, there's more. I also have this. This is number 162, which I sadly smudged some color on the front by accident. So it's, it's no good. I, I can't change it. That glaze is set in there. Uh, but I think that we're also going to put luster on this one. So we'll do two. We're going to do a gold that has white tops and bottoms, and we're going to do a gold that has the glitter glaze top and bottom. Now this went on very satin. This is a satin um, surface on this, so you're going to see two different finishes in the luster, which I'm pretty excited about. Anyway, we're going to start the luster now, and the luster mm -hmm. is super toxic. Um, the vapors, that the, the lacquer that the gold is in suspension in, are terrible for you. So I'm going to be doing, I will be doing this inside of the spray booth with the respirator on to stay totally safe. Um, so get ready for a lot of voiceover. At this point, I should say that I do not do a lot of luster application and I know very little about it. So at this point, I'd like to thank Brett Kern at Brett Kern Art on Instagram 
an incredible artist and a master of the luster. He was a guy that gave me this fantastic tip of masking off the edges with a vinyl tape to get a really crisp line between the luster and the uncoated ceramic areas. Those itty, itty, bitty containers of luster are really easy to knock over with your brush. Lots of people will drill a small hole in a board and then set the luster into it. I'm doing this quick and easy hot glue technique to hold it down while I'm using it in the spray booth. Hopefully this all won't just blow away. All right, it's the moment of truth. We are gonna start putting on this luster. Now, like I said, I am no luster pro and I am doing my best, but if you're going to try this in the studio, I would recommend diving deeper and looking at, uh, I don't know, videos of people that do this all the time because there are tons of little nuances about luster that you've got to be aware of. You need to use natural bristle brushes. You have to use a special cleaner. So many little things, in fact, that I suspect this is not going to be the only firing. We're going to put these in now, fire them at cone 018, and I suspect I'll be doing a second luster application tomorrow and firing them one more time. Look at these things. Can you believe it? Oh, it is always so magic to watch that red lacquer turn into gold. Ah, oh, I love it. They turned out fantastic. Really happy with them. And you can totally see the difference between the gloss glaze, see the finish on the gloss versus the finish over the satin glaze. This is a softer gold appearance. It's the exact same metal. It's still gold applied over a surface, but since this surface was satin, the gold looks softer than it does on there. Now, are these awesome? Yes. Could they be more awesome? I think they might. So it is Sunday morning. I am going to change into my studio clothes. No, no, no. I'm going to make breakfast. It's donut day. Gonna make donuts, eat donuts, change into my studio clothes. I just so happen to have one more container of premium gold luster. I'm gonna put a second coat on these things and put them back into the kiln so that we can get an even deeper glaze. Now, I could, cause I can even see, there's a little spot right here where there's some brush marks. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do the most perfect application. So we're gonna, we're gonna go for another round. That means a trip to the spray booth and we apply the second coat just like we did the first coat. Now the one difference is with the metallic underneath the red lacquer, they kind of do look like giant bizarre Christmas tree ornaments. Now, even though I am done painting on the lacquer, I am keeping my respirator on for the entire process of loading the kiln and setting up the firing. In fact, Mrs. Vantiki is not even in the studio. The fumes that this stuff puts off are really toxic and you want to avoid them at any and all costs. Alrighty, I've got them in the kiln. The vent is on, it's sucking all the poisonous gas out of here. Uh, so it's safe to take off the respirator. Let's all collectively cross our fingers uh, and we will open up the kiln tomorrow morning, hopefully with it being extra doubly golden with that second application of luster. Uh, for those of you keeping score at home, that was just about the entire uh, second container of premium gold luster. So we've gone through two premium gold luster containers so that would be a total of four grams to put glaze or I'm mean, sorry to put luster on those two volcanic vapor mugs all right this is it the second firing is complete hopefully that second coat of luster has smoothed out any brush strokes it's added an extra depth to the lustrous gold let's see what we got Opening the kiln is always a terrifying experience, but fortunately, we've got a success in this case. The gold turned out fantastic, and the satin gold is lusciously sat satiny. Is that a word? I don't know. Anyway, it looks great. And there you have it. The mystery of applying precious metal to ceramics hopefully is a little less mysterious to you now. Um, if you're wondering if these are going to be sold, the answer is yes. 
Follow me on Instagram and I will post the sale information there once we figure it all out. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. It means the world to me. Thanks for tagging along and I will see you on the next episode of Tiki Technical Tuesday.